So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about um, the proposed courts facility that is actually on the ballot right now. Uh, early voting started today, and what I understand, don't quote me exactly, but I heard we had about 890 or so uh, votes cast today around the county. I can't tell you if that's high or low. I heard that walking out of the building, so I'm not, I'm not so sure, and I'm not even sure that number's exactly correct, but that's what I heard coming out of the building. But we definitely had uh, voting occur today, and we'll have voting through the rest of this week on Monday, and then Election Day will be on, on March 12th. In these town halls, um, typically the way these go is I'll talk a little bit about how we run the meeting, and then I'll talk to you very briefly about the his historical perspective of our courts facility, the current challenges we have, uh, the proposed solution, so the building we're going to talk about, and then the other buildings we're going to talk about as well, the funding proposal, which will actually be what is on the ballot, and then we'll take any questions and answers that anybody has, and we'll also let anybody stand up and make any comments that they'd like to make. And typically what we like to do is keep those to about three minutes so that everybody has a chance. So if you want to ask a question, ask a question. And even if you want to ask a question along the way, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. As long as we can get through the presentation, it only takes me about three or four hours. So I hope you have. Um, but so that I can answer any questions along the way. But then at the end, I know there are people here who would like to express their opinions. That's encouraged. This is a town hall. This is the, the great democratic experiments, experience here tonight. So by all means, uh, feel free to stand up and, and take the mic. And so with that, why don't we get started? <coughs> and where I want to start is the historical perspective of our courts facility in Bentonville, Arkansas. So Bentonville is the county seat, and circuit courts facilities reside in the county seats of the counties in which they are, um, on which they operate. And so last night, Kurt Moore, who is one of our longest, I think our longest serving JP, reaffirm the fact that uh, these facilities have to be in the county seat. And so your district courts, uh, like what Chris Griffin does, are in the cities, those are municipal courts, but circuit courts are in the county seat. And in Bentonville, our courthouse is on the square. This building here, I'm sure most, if not all of you are familiar with, is the historic courthouse. And this is a, a picture from many, many decades ago. I can't tell you exactly when, but I can tell you the building's about 90 years old. It was built and designed for one circuit court judge and we have one actual courtroom in that building. Today we have three judges in that building. We still have the courtroom in use. Judge Green holds criminal court in one of those courtrooms, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And then we have two converted courtrooms where two other circuit court judges, mostly uh, with civil dockets, uh, operate. So we have three judges in this building today. This building and our other buildings I'm going to tell you about present a number of challenges for us. Uh, in fact, this has been a debate and a need that's been growing for a couple of decades or more. And so I'm going to have our six circuit court judges tell you a little bit about those challenges. And before they do, I, I want to just kind of set the numbers. We have six judges in Benton County, six circuit court judges. Five of them are in downtown facilities, which is where we're going to focus our attention tonight. The sixth circuit court judge, Judge Smith, is in our juvenile justice facility, which is in a smaller facility attached to the juvenile detention center out by the road department and out by the jail on the uh, east side of the jail. And so that facility is, is unchanged through anything here. We'll continue to hold juvenile court, drug court, veterans court out there. That building was completed, I believe, around 2011, right before I came on the quorum court. Um, and that building is just fine. So what we're talking about here tonight are the five circuit court judges that are in downtown Bentonville. So I'm going to play a quick video from your circuit court judges. My name is Doug Schrantz. I am the Benton County Administrative Judge. I would like to introduce my fellow circuit judges, Judge Robin Green, who has been serving for 10 years, Judge Brad Karen, who has served for six years, Judge Tom Smith, who has served also for six years, Judge John Scott, who has served for 17 years, and Judge Zolly Duncan, who has served for 18 years. And I have served for 10 years. We're holding court in a 90-year-old building that was originally built to serve one circuit-riding judge who appeared here only occasionally. The county has built two additional spaces in there as courtrooms, so now three judges are in the main courthouse. Two of us are in converted spaces, one across the street from the main courthouse and one two blocks away. And the final judge is in the juvenile court a mile and a half from the main courthouse. We need a safe, convenient and efficient building that will provide for the users. And that means the judges, the court staff, and the citizens, the jurors, witnesses, litigants, and children that must do business in the courthouse. 
Okay, so let me tell you about some of the challenges we have, starting with insufficient public space. And so this morning, actually, we had our county facilities closed yesterday uh, because of the snow in the morning and the snow and the ice and the temperature. <coughs> um, so this morning, some of, the, some of that docket spilled over, and this line was out in front of that courthouse this morning, uh, just like this. Now, they were dressed a little different. This clearly is a spring or a summer picture and a pretty nice day, and while the sun was out today, I think it was about, I don't know, 15, 18, 20 degrees out this morning, and those folks were lined up to get into this building. They're lined up to get into this building because we have very little lobby space, very little public space, and we only have room for one security line that people have to go in to get to the uh, courtrooms to where they're assigned. And so right out of the gate, one of our uh, most significant issues is insufficient public space. I want to tell you about another facility we have, which is across the street from the historic courthouse that we refer to as the old post office. You can see up on the building, it says the Benton County Court House Annex. This is another courthouse, if you will, another courtroom. This is where Brad Karen has another criminal courtroom. And so we have really two criminal court judges in downtown. We have Judge Green in the historic courthouse. We have Brad Karen in this building. And again, people have to line up to get into this building in the morning, particularly on Mondays on arraignment days. Uh, it's not uncommon to see people stretched even around that corner so that they can get in. And a lot of times they can't get in because the lobby I'm going to show you is too crowded. And also, this is a very tight security entrance, one security line uh, for our citizens to get into this courtroom. This gives you an idea of once you're inside the historic courtroom, what it's like in there. Um, and I'll ask how many of you, without revealing any confidences, how many of you have had experience with our judicial system, with our courts facilities? Okay. So some of you know full well what I'm talking about. When you come in this building, you're in tight corridors. You're around blind corners. Uh, you have very little room to sit. You have one creaky elevator for the public. You have a lack of restrooms. And frankly, it's just not a very pleasant experience all the way around. Not necessarily that we're here to provide pleasant experiences at the county, uh, but it's practically punishing to be in this building. And this in and of itself presents a significant security issue as well. I'll talk about detainees in just a minute, but this lack of public space, this is in Brad Karen's courtroom, is also a serious security issue for our sheriff's office and for the public. And let me describe that a little bit. So I showed you the line outside. This is in the Brad Karen's courtroom, courthouse. You're going to make a hard left turn underneath that um, fan there where that light is. You're going to turn right then in the, into that metal detector. There's the sheriff station. So the sheriff's deputy right there is going gonna, is gonna to see that you get through the metal detector OK. And then that's your hallway to spread out, which is also the lobby. That is narrower by far than this opening right here. And so that sheriff's officer, that sheriff's deputy rather, has to keep track of security all the way down that hallway. And here's what happens down that hallway. Those are people that come in for life-changing situations into our courthouses. You might be coming in on a child custody case. You might be coming in on a divorce case. You might be coming in as the victim of a crime to see the adjudication of that case that day and be sitting right next to the family of the accused. There is no room to spread out in our facilities. And for our sheriff's deputies, our sheriff's office, that creates a special security concern in these buildings, that lack of public space. And when you talk to people who design courthouses today, they'll tell you that public space is a very important part of the equation. Another challenge we have is we lack room for expansion in downtown Bentonville. So this is an overhead shot of basically of downtown Bentonville, and that's the square right there, so you can get oriented. That box up there top left is Brad Karen's courtroom that I just showed you. That's one judge. There in the middle, kind of middle top, is, uh, is the historic courthouse. That's, that's three judges. And then over, to the, over there to the right is uh, Judge Trance's new courtroom, new temporary courtroom. Uh, that we just built last year because he was uh, in this building here that was leased space by the county, but they're going to tear that down, and word is they're going to put a hotel there, so we had to find room for Judge Trantz down Main Street. And so now, after nine years in his first temporary courtroom, he's now starting his tenure in his second uh, temporary courtroom in his tenth year as a judge. When you look at this picture, there's a few things that come to mind right away. First of all, uh, not all of you raised your hand about having come to our courts facilities. And so those of you who haven't raised your hand, if you were to get jury duty, or if you were to have some case that you were keeping track of, uh, we'd send you a postcard or some sort of other direction and try to direct you to the appropriate building. And that in and of itself is a challenge in downtown Bentonville to make sure you get to the right place. Compounding that is the other thing that you don't see a lot of in this picture is parking. 
You do see a lot up there by Judge Trance's uh, courtroom, but that is not a dedicated lot to the county or to the courts. Um, and so it's kind of catch as catch can. And I don't know how many times I've done this presentation now, but dozens. I think this is our 13th or 14th town hall now. Um, but what I tell people is the downtown parking district in Bentonville will tell you there's 650 surface parking spaces in downtown Bentonville until you try to find one. And then it's very challenging. <laughs> and that's exactly what's going on here. We have a lack of parking. So we have to direct people to the right building. Uh, we have a lack of parking. And then the final thing is what I already showed you. These buildings are tight, they're crowded, they're cramped. We don't have room for people in these buildings. The other thing that's happening then that leads to this expansion issue is we're in a growing county. Uh, you're in Rogers, Arkansas. This is one of the fastest growing cities in the state. You are in the fastest growing county and region in the state, and in fact, one of the fastest in the country. And as a result, uh, one of the measures that we have for our circuit court districts is how many citizens are there per judge. There are 29 circuit court districts across the state of Arkansas. And Benton County, which our county happens to be its own circuit court district, is number one in terms of population per judge. Shouldn't come as any great surprise, we're a growing county. That says 44,383. I can assure you that's over 45,000 now. The next highest is the, is the district to our south, Washington, Madison County, and then Crawford, Montgomery. But those are the four highest ranking uh, districts in terms of citizens per judge in the state and growing by far. So what that has caused is our circuit court district, uh, circuit court judges rather, who you saw earlier in the video, rightfully so, have gone to the legislature and have asked for another judge. And there's a reasonable chance if it doesn't happen in this session, it's gonna happen before uh, too much longer. And when I say session, I mean legislative session in Little Rock. It's inevitable that we're gonna get another circuit court judge. And from that last picture I showed you, there's no room for that judge in any of our facilities today. We will have to find another facility for that judge one way or the other. Now, I'm the county judge, and a lot of people don't know uh, what the county judge does. I'm still learning, but, but one of the things that I do is I oversee facilities. And so I'm in charge of trying to figure out where would we put our circuit court judges, our, our circuit court system, if you will. It's one of the primary roles of county government. And if we get another judge, I don't know where we would put that judge today. We don't have room and we're growing. And this situation is getting more pronounced. We have inadequate courtrooms. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this, uh, except to say this is Judge Duncan's courtroom. This is one of the modified courtrooms in the historic courthouse. And first of all, I wanna say we, we hold court in these courtrooms. Uh, kudos to the judiciary and their staff and to the bailiffs and to the sheriff's office and everybody that pulls off court in these courtrooms. Uh, and they do, they get the job done. But this courtroom is not adequate. First of all, it's 90 years old. So technology in this courtroom is practically non-existent. We roll out an extension cord so that they could plug in their laptops. This is a crowded courtroom. And so you can see the, the two councils, the two sets of attorneys have had to push their tables together because there's not room for them to spread out. And sometimes I understand there are more attorneys than that that crowd around those tables in these situations. And then you have the attorney presenting to the jury with his back to the, to the rest of the courtroom. Uh, the bailiff up here top left behind this flag, uh, flagpole here has to keep track of security across this whole courtroom. And while this is a, a, looks like a jury trial for a civil case, not a particularly uh, you know, uh, security heightened situation, there are times when that gallery back there is full of people and that bailiff is then in charge of security there. And that's a little bit of a challenging uh, situation in a courtroom this tight. And then if you're in that jury box, it's really tight. You gotta kinda sit with your legs to the side if you're, if you're taller than me. And then the, the part of this picture I like, and this was taken a couple years ago, is that 50 gallon trash, pan, trash can back there that's there to collect rainwater that leaks off the roof of a 90 year old building. Now, the quorum court approved funds for the roof and we have sealed the roof, but this is still a 90 year old building. In any way you cut it, it has a personality all its own and there are issues with this building all the time. We have security concerns. I talked about the concerns presented by citizens in the building. Well, we do have inmates in the building too. So this is Judge Green's courtroom. This is the actual room that was designed to be a courtroom, and it's pretty good size. And in fact, this room's probably not too much different in terms of size than that room. I don't know what the, what the size of this room is. That's, this might be a little bit smaller. This is a good size room, and uh, Judge Green holds criminal court in there, and on arraignment days and other days, we've gotta bring groups of inmates down to this courtroom. We do not have detention space for these folks when we bring them to the courthouse. And so for the most part, except for the most egregious offenders, they've gotta sit in the courtroom right there with civilians, right there with somebody who might be you someday. 
And I'll tell you, these aren't the most pleasant folks in the world. Um, they've got to be watched over very carefully by the sheriff's office. There's a deputy <coughs> right there. He's got to watch over them for things like the passing of contraband or notes or communications with family members or gain signals or all sorts of stuff they've got to keep track of with these inmates. And I'll tell you, we've had several people in these town halls who have raised their hand and they'll say, you know what, there was a time when I was sitting there and it's not a comfortable place to be when you have to sit in the courtroom uh, with inmates. It's just not. Uh, a lot of them just aren't the most pleasant folks in the world. In fact, we had one a few weeks ago. Um, I don't always tell this story, but I will tonight. We had one who thought it'd be great to bite down on his tongue as hard as he could so that he could bleed profusely and spit blood. Uh, and that happened with somebody who had been sitting in one of our courtrooms. This over in Judge Karen's courtroom. So remember I showed you that lineup outside that adobe looking building and then if you were lucky enough to get in, you got to sit in that tiny little hallway. And then if you were lucky enough to get out of that, you got to come sit in this. This is the courtroom. It's much smaller than Judge Green's courtroom. And you can see again, uh, this is on a Monday. This is arraignment day. It's a, bit, a little bit chaotic there where the attorneys are, but they, they process these cases very quickly. But there's the inmates sitting right there in the courtroom uh, where citizens are. And again, it creates the same sort of security concerns that I described. So what I wanted to do, do now is show you a quick video uh, from your sheriff, Sean Holloway, and he'll describe this situation a little bit more. You know, when you have four locations that you're trying to do the same job at four locations, having one building uh, has, instead of going through four entrances, we have one, so there's automatically a uh, resource there that we would save that we could utilize uh, other parts of the county, uh, either patrolling or whatever our current needs are going forward in the future. We have so many people on our dockets now that we do have the co-mingling of uh, right next to the inmates at times, uh, other family members, it could be family members of the victim. Uh, it's just not the ideal situation. We need to create separation and be able to have that control mechanism uh, to keep the inmates uh, who are there for a court proceeding separated uh, from the general public. Uh, but having a facility like this that was purposely built uh, to secure the prisoners and protect the public is a uh, good thing for everyone. And it's just a win-win uh, for our court system uh, to follow this model and have this type of facility. One thing I'll point out before we move on, uh, there's a mistake that's been pointed out to us in this video, and that is Sean talked about four facilities, four entrances, and, and he does have four. That includes Tom Smith's entrance over at the JJC. That would still have to be staffed. Uh, but what we're talking about are three security entrances in downtown Bentonville for those three buildings I talked about, and those would go down to one in the new building. And so I want to make sure that there's some clarity around what was in that video. So let's talk about the building. So first, let's talk about the location. Probably the reason we're here tonight, and not 10, 15, 20 years ago practically, is because the location has been very controversial uh, for this court's facility. There's been a lot of good arguments for putting this building out on Highway 102, which is right next to where the Benton County Jail is. There is some land out there, and there's some people who, who have advocated for that over the years. And then there's been a lot of people who have advocated uh, for being in downtown Bentonville where the courts are today. This location right here is what was approved with, with my urging, my support, my endorsement, but approved by the Quorum Court in March 2017. So some of the Quorum Court members are here tonight. All but two voted in favor of this. And this location right here, I'll, I'll kind of point it out real quick. There's the square again in downtown Bentonville, 21C Hotel, the old post office and the historic courthouse. So that piece of property is now where we're gonna put the building. A lot of good arguments for downtown, just like there's arguments for 102. There's arguments about just sentimental value. There are people who come and say, I just can't imagine the courts not being in downtown Bentonville. And that's okay. There's an economic development argument. It would take millions of dollars out of downtown Bentonville if you move those courts out because a lot of personnel would move out as well. But there are really two reasons for taxpayers why this location makes the most sense. First one is, that piece of property right there is going to be contributed to this project by the Walton Family Foundation. Same foundation that makes contributions and grants, et cetera, all over this region. A lot of times in downtowns, not always in downtowns. But when I'm asked, so why would they do that? Why would they do that in downtown Bentonville? I don't want to pretend to speak for them, but if you read the newspaper, every week you can say that they are doing what they can for downtown revitalization, including in this town. 
uh, including, we were in Siloam Springs last night, including there, including Springdale, including Fayetteville. And so this location uh, is a contribution from the Walton Family Foundation. Now that's one, one good factor for putting it downtown. The bigger factor from my standpoint is the fact that by putting that building down here, we can continue to use the buildings we have. So the historic courthouse, that 90 year old building that I talked to you about, will be renovated and we will continue to use that as part of the court's campus. We have about half the prosecutor's office in there right now. We'll put the entire prosecutor's office in there. We have a law library up on the fourth floor. We'll continue to have a law library up there. That main courtroom that I told you about, that was Judge Green's courtroom, we're gonna re uh, repurpose and, and renovate that courtroom and it'll still remain a public room, but we'll hold meetings there like quorum court or like planning board or meetings like this or moot court or mock trial. Uh, it could be open to civic clubs. That is a very special room in this county. If you talk to anybody who's in the historic preservation world, they'll tell you that that's a crown jewel room and we will preserve that for public meetings, just like we will the lobby of that building. So that building will continue to be used as part of the court's campus. You can't really see, but there's a building behind there where the old jail is, the old sheriff's office is. We're gonna put the public defender in that building. And so we'll continue to use that building as well. And then the old post office, that's Brad Karen's courtroom. We're gonna maintain that, we're gonna renovate that, and for a use that we haven't exactly identified yet. But that historic preservation group um, is very much, and I'm a part of that by the way, is very much in favor of keeping that building as a part of historic downtown Bentonville. So that building will remain as well. That gives us uh, a lot of options, frankly. Um, and one of those is to make actually a smaller building than we would have before, construct a smaller building. And I'll come back to that. So this is the facility itself. Uh, it is four stories plus a basement. This is a rendering of what it would look like if you were standing kind of on the corner by the historic courthouse across the street from the old post office. Uh, it's about 87,000 square feet. Make no mistake, that's a big building. That'd be a big building in Rogers. It's a big building in Bentonville. It's a big building. Perhaps most important, we'll put all of our judges and circuit court, court, circuit court clerk functions under one roof. We'll put probate under one roof. And so that building will have all of our downtown judges in it and your circuit court clerk as well as probate. Really key part of this building. Uh, we hired a company called the National Center for State Courts, which is a preeminent consultancy who helps municipalities, counties, states, even the federal government design and program courts facilities. They helped us with this one, and one of the key factors in this is the separation of the judiciary from the citizens, from the detainees. That's a huge, huge security step in today's courts facilities, and this building accomplishes that in a number of ways. Separate elevators, separate stairways, separate security, et cetera. But one of the key reasons, one of the key functions of this building is we'll have a sally port and detainee holding capacity in the basement of this building. A sally port's a fancy name for a garage, but it's a secure garage where the sheriff's uh, transport vehicles will pull in underneath this building. They'll be able to unload the prisoners, the transported prisoners, into a detention center that'll be able to hold 50 prisoners, 50 detainees underneath this building to jail standards, which is really important. We'll have appropriate setbacks for safety and security and actually because the setbacks will be greater than are, are prescribed by the city of Bentonville, we'll have a little bit more public space around this building which will be nice. This building has expansion potential which I'll come back to in a minute. And we've also built this building with a 50 to 100 year lifespan. So the folks who built the courthouse before us, we're still going strong in that building 90 years later. It's not serving our needs as a courtroom, it's a courts facility, but we'll continue to use that building. It's a solid building. And I hope that 90 years from now, this building is still in use. This is a view of the building from the square. Uh, it meets all building requirements, all zoning considerations. Uh, went through Bentonville large scale planning with no exemptions. It went through unanimously. We're usually using similar materials to what's being used in construction in downtown Bentonville these days, such as the 21C next door, fiber cement panels, brick veneers. It's also on the Midtown building and some other buildings being built down there. Uh, the color of the building is not entirely settled yet uh, because when you put a building out on Facebook like this, suddenly you have lots of people who wanna give you inputs on colors. And so we'll work through colors and shading on that. And so we'll, we'll, we haven't quite settled on that. From a budget standpoint, this floor plan maximizes efficiency and it minimizes square footage. And let me talk about that for a minute. In 2016, the year before I became judge, I was on the quorum court. Uh, we as a quorum court worked with the, with the previous judge on hiring an architect that presented about six different options for a courts building. 
Uh, some were out at 102, some were downtown, but all of them were well in excess of 100,000 square feet. In fact, some of them got to 120, 130,000 square feet. Well, this building is 87,000 square feet because we're able to continue to use the other facilities around it. And so that's a key part when we talk about minimizing square footage, it's still a big building, but it's not as big a building as was proposed previously, and therefore it's not as expensive. In fact, this building's gonna be about $30 million, um, which I, I, it's a big number, I'll talk about it more in a minute, but the, the least expensive options from the previous studies, uh, downtown or out on 102, were in that 34 to $35 million range, and some of them went up to 40 and $41 million. So it's a less expensive building because we have less square footage. The other key feature is I talked about parking. So when this building is constructed, the downtown parking district number three, and there's a, there's a letter here if anybody wants to see it about the, um, about the, the uh, commitment here. That organization, which is made up of the Bentonville uh, Revitalization, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I've gotta look, it's a downtown Bentonville group and it's the downtown parking group, uh, are committed to building this parking deck. This deck is approximately 400 parking spaces. It will be built at no taxpayer cost. It will be located across B Street from the 21C Hotel deck, which is right here. And if the building were built, I would be kind of standing right back by the sally port of that building. After it's constructed, it will be free of charge to citizens 24 seven. There will not be a charge to park in this building. And so I mentioned that, that the inventory of downtown parking is about 650 or so spaces. This will add 400 spaces to it. So when the courts building is built, no taxpayer expense at all. One quick caveat, um, if the county, if we choose to reserve spaces in there, if we want dedicated spaces in that building, we could say we want 100 spaces dedicated during court operations, and if so, we would have to pay a fee of about $85 per spot per year. So that's for 100 spaces, $8,500 a year. It costs about $20,000 per spot to build one of these, so that's a, a heck of a deal. Plus, we pay maintenance on all our parking today anyhow. We'll have contemporary courtrooms. I won't spend a lot of time on this. Suffice it to say, we're not gonna, we're not gonna uh, skimp on technology. They'll be much more comfortable to be in, much more comfortable for the attorneys. We'll have a lot more public space in this building. That gives, this gives you an idea of what the lobby uh, looks like, a con conceptual rendering of the lobby. Much bigger lobby space, much more room for folks to spread out. This is kind of the breezy hallway that's uh, by the courtrooms, and so, um, these are the, on, on the second and third floor, there'll be three courtrooms on each floor, and this is a big hallway out, outside those courtrooms where people can spread out. And I think I went right past that. Just to make sure you understand, when we open this building, we'll open it with six courtrooms. So we'll be able to take on the five judges we have now, and if we get another judge, we'll have room for that judge right away. So we'll open the building with six finished courtrooms. That's the hallway uh, by the entrance to the courtrooms. More public space underneath, there's a big kind of stairway on the southwest corner, so there's more public space there, again, room to spread out. And there's room for expansion in this building. So I mentioned that we're gonna open with six courtrooms to accommodate six judges. Uh, the top floor, the fourth floor, will be shelled out space. Imagine a room like this that has nothing in it, it'll just be locked up, and we can do two additional courtrooms in that building as we need them down the road. So we'll be able to take on at least a seventh or an eighth judge. And the way they're holding court today and the way they're holding court in the future might change. This could be flexible space and we might even have more judges in there. Who's to say? This will be a secure facility. So inmates, in addition to having detention uh, of, uh, capacity beneath the building, on the courtroom floors themselves, there's additional uh, detention capacity for 25 inmates. Those inmates will sit in a room that looks like this and they'll interact with the judge uh, via audio, via speakers. They won't ever have to be in the courtroom unless they're in a jury trial. Of course, they're in a jury trial, they have the right to be in a courtroom. <coughs> Otherwise, inmates won't sit with citizens. They'll sit in this secure space right adjacent uh, to, the criminal courts, uh, to the criminal courtrooms. <coughs> Downstairs on the first floor in the lobby area, uh, you'll come in, there'll be two security lines. You'll come in from a uh, climate controlled vestibule that'll be much bigger than anything we have now. And there'll be lots of shaded overhangs and other places for shelter uh, outside. Plenty of, it's plenty good to wait outside a lot of days in Arkansas. Uh, but there'll be shade and other things that you can wait outside. And by the way, 
as you come in there, the circuit court clerk's office will be right there to the left and probate will be right there to the left. Very convenient uh, for the citizens. Okay, so let's talk about what's going to be on the ballot or what's on the ballot proposal. So let me first talk about the county contribution. And so the total contribution by taxpayers for what I've showed you tonight is estimated at $35 million. $10 million would come from existing funds, our reserve funds, for example. We're about $15 million or so in, un in what we call unencumbered reserves, free reserve funds. Uh, but over the next 10 years, I'm sorry, over the next five years, the Corm Court would use those monies and other monies coming into our general fund to come up with $10 million towards the facility. The tax that I'm going to tell you about uh, would raise another $25 million. And so let's talk about the sales tax. It's a countywide dedicated sales tax. In fact, we don't have one of those right now because the county tax that you see on your receipt, we only get about 18% of that 1% of the county tax. There is no, there is no full dedicated countywide sales tax right now. This one that we're talking about would be one eighth of a cent. Lowest increment you can go. You can't ask for uh, anything lower than an eighth of a cent. This allows us to do this building without going into long-term debt. And I'll, I'll pause there for just a minute. Oh. There's another one of our Quorum Court members, Carrie Perrin-Smith. Hi, Carrie. Um, what this allows us to do is to not go into long-term debt. Let me, let me stop there for a minute, because uh, this was kind of the big debate at the Quorum Court. There's really two philosophies for funding a building of this size. You can either bond the building, and I would be standing here in front of taxpayers asking to go into long-term debt, 20, 25 years or so, and along the way, we would pay millions of dollars of interest, 8, 10, 12, 15 million dollars of interest, and we would pay it by cutting the budgets and, and paying off the bond. And in the meantime, all of that interest we're paying is taxpayer dollars as well. So we're passing on debt to your kids um, and cutting the budget to do it. Or do you do a sales tax and try to keep it as short and as painless as possible? It's an increased tax, there's no doubt. And I know that no new taxes are good. I get that. We all started from that point, frankly. But what we were able to do is come up with a building that we could fund in four and a half years so we could basically treat it like a construction loan. We don't have to go into long-term debt. Do it with an eighth of a cent sales tax so that none of the cities in Benton County go over 10% in their overall sales tax. We keep everybody under 10%. And the tax then sunsets in four and a half years. And it's, it's a hard sunset. Requires voter approval. That's why we're here tonight. But let me talk about that extension piece for a minute. Because there's a lot of people who say, you guys always say you're going to end those taxes and you don't. And, and I, I understand that. So in a county, we're different than cities. And you guys live in an area that have growing cities and cities have growing infrastructure needs. And to accommodate that infrastructure, to accommodate that growth, cities have to bond infrastructure. They just had one in, in Rogers uh, last year. That's so that you have parks and fire departments. And so that's when you have streets, you have curb and gutter and sewers. Uh, it's so that you have the amenities of living in a city. Well, counties are different. We build roads. We don't do streets with curb and gutter, and we don't have a park system. We don't have a fire department. Uh, and so we have different <coughs> needs than, than growing cities do. So I'm not saying that as a critique to cities, but my point is the last time we did this was for the jail, and it was in the mid-90s. It was a half-cent sales tax. Voters passed it. Tax was levied. Building was built. Tax ended 30, I think it was 34 months later. It was a 36 month tax, but I think it ended in 34 months. And there's not been an extension asked for that. And there hasn't been an extension in Benton County. So at the county, you know, this is a single project. This is not a group of projects. This is not an ongoing project. This is a project that will end. And so four and a half years, no extensions. What does it mean for you? 12 and a half cents on $100. The mayor of uh, Bentonville spoke to you tonight, and uh, he'll tell you it's a penny on a burger, fries, and a drink uh, is what we're asking for. And so uh, we're trying to keep it as minimal as possible. But this building won't build itself. It's going to have to be paid for one way or another. Now, in addition to the county contribution, there is third-party funding. <coughs> talked about some of these. The land donation, that's about a million dollars or so. I think it's $960,000 or so. That was in the letter. That was the value of the land. That's been a few years ago. That might have changed now. But that's at no cost to taxpayers. The foundation is also giving the county a $2 million cash grant that can be used either for the new building or for the existing buildings. And then there's the parking deck uh, that I mentioned, again, at no taxpayer cost at all. So in summary, this is a complete courts campus. We get the new building, 
all the judges in that building, the detention space, space for the public, separation of the, of the judiciary from the citizens, from the detainees, uh, and frankly, something that can expand and be used for decades to come. We'll get to renovate our historic courthouse and other buildings in downtown, and they will continue to be used as a part of the overall court's campus. And there's the parking structure, uh, the additional parking convenience. Voting has started, started today. I mentioned that on the outset. Uh, it goes all through this week. In fact, if you go around the corner of this building, our election commission early voting's around the corner of this building in a room right over there. Uh, you can go find out more information at bentoncountyar.gov. We have a version of this presentation, might not look exactly like this because we, we tweak it all the time, but it's very similar to this. You can go find this presentation out there and some other stuff. I wish, it's not. Uh, we're almost at the last town hall, and I don't, by, by the means, I, I love the folks in Rogers. I've actually been waiting for this night for a long time, but then my good friend Tom Allen, J.P. Allen, has added another one tomorrow night in Cave Springs. So we have one more to go. Uh, these are all the town halls that we've done, very similar to this one. And then for early voting, um, there are seven early voting locations. It's a little unusual. That's more than, than is typical for early voting, uh, including this location, but there are seven total. Again, you can go, uh, you can look here or go out on our website and it's all out there. And I think there are 34, 34 uh, vote centers on election day. So there's lots of access to voting uh, for this election. And so those are all the different places and you can see there's several in the Rogers area down there towards the bottom. <coughs> 